Next, we have the Director of Group Risk and Compliance of Edotco Group, Ms. Azara Anur. Next, we have the Chief Sustainability Officer of City Development Limited, Ms. Esther Ann. And the moderator for this session will be the Chief of Outreach and Engagement of the UN Global Compact, Ms. Sue Outerch. Welcome, Ms. Sue Outerch. Thank you everyone and uh, good morning to all of you here and good afternoon or evening or anyone else who is dialing in today to this uh, fantastic session that we have. I have to say uh, I feel in a good, mo a good mood this morning because it's, it's really moving and, and, and humbling and wonderful to be with this panel of uh, four really strong women who are doing great work to help us deliver the sustainable development goals. So really take note of what they have, they have practical advice and thoughts on, on how we can all work together to make progress against the goals. Uh, before I ask them a few questions, I'm just going to set a little bit of the context of uh, what we're doing here at this panel today. Well, we know we're all here because we're committed to delivering against these goals, a better world and a protected planet for all of us. Um, and we know that we're not on track. We're still behind the goal, so we really got to think about how we can step up and how we can make more progress. Um, we know that the, the, in the companies in the UN Global Compact, 39% of them believe that the targets and the goals that they have set are not enough to deliver against the sustainable development goals. So we're all looking as to how we can raise our ambition a little bit. We know um, here that the Economic and Social Commission for Asia Pacific, ESCAP, has done a review showing that the region is not on track to deliver the goals in full. There are, however, some real plus points and high points in this region. So in, um, in um, education, industry, uh, infrastructure and innovation, and also affordable clean energy, this region is ahead of other, as, as a sub-region ahead of other regions. So that's great news. But on the whole, we're still behind, particularly in renewable energy. We need some work to do. So we're all here thinking, you know, what are we going to do? How can we make progress? Um, we, the business community can play a significant role. It really has, has the innovation, uh, energy, and commitment to make some, some real progress, uh, which is why we're here today. Um, and we're gonna, we know it's difficult. We know it's tricky. Um, and that's what this team of women here are going to help us with. Some of the challenges the face, that they faced, some of the ideas that they've put in place to help make progress. So we're all going to learn a bit from that. At the UN Global Compact, we also have some uh, tools and resources that can help businesses. Um, and in that vein, today we're very uh, excited to launch the third round of our SDG Ambition Accelerator. Um, that's a six month long program. It'll be the third time we uh, run it. And that helps businesses come together, set goals, understand how they might deliver against those goals and uh, put in plans and ideas to help deliver uh, in, the, in their businesses. Uh, we've done it, as I say, this will be the third time round, and we've had a lot of success. We've run it now in 49 local networks across 80 countries um, and over a thousand uh, companies have engaged. The good news is that those companies that have been through the accelerator have made some real progress. Three quarters of businesses going through that program have either set new goals, have increased the ambition of their current goals, or are in the process of doing that with a full integrated team in their business to try and work out new ideas and ambitions. And actually 95% of companies that have been on the program have actually found new business ideas with which to make progress against the goals. So I hope you'll see that we're doing everything we can to help the business community make more progress in this area. But that's enough from me. Um, what we really want to hear is from these women who've actually practically put this in place and they'll talk about the challenges, some advice, and, and the value and benefit of actually setting goals in their, incorporated right into their business and right across supply chains. So let's, um, let's ask some questions and go into some of the practical things that this team have been doing. 
So first of all, I'd like to start with Elim. Um, I know that you've been doing some fantastic work. In fact, we met just last night and had a talk about some of that. So I'd like to start with uh, an overall question for you. What does ambitious action for the SDGs look like in your business, practically? And, and, and maybe in this current situation, how has the pandemic affected your plans? Okay. Uh, good morning. Thank you for the question. So I would like to explain that uh, APP Sustainability uh, Roadmap Vision 2030. Uh, when we uh, uh, start to planning and uh, we one of the consideration, of course, how we can con uh, contribute to the SDGs and included the uh, Paris Agreement on Climate. So uh, the SRV 2030 uh, covers uh, three pillars uh, into production, uh, forest, and also people. So uh, when we uh, uh, set the uh, goals, of course, uh, we have to uh, understand what is the SDGs and uh, we prioritize uh, to determine uh, which goals that align with our uh, operation or vision uh, goals and strategy. And of course, after that, uh, we uh, set the targets, uh, uh, a more reasonable target and uh, after we understand, of course, we can uh, set uh, more ambitious. And uh, about the monitoring and evaluation, uh, we use the SDD's uh, compass uh, to uh, monitor to make sure they progress, and we report through our sustainability report annually. And through, uh, during the pandemic, I would, I would like to explain that uh, our business uh, quite went well, and uh, we prepared from the beginning, developed task force, uh, uh, include uh, establish uh, almost like uh, 25 protocols to make sure that uh, all our employee and uh, communities and people surrounding our operation uh, keep safe. And uh, within uh, two years, uh, no one of our operation shut down. Uh, we successfully running 100% uh, by uh, implementing the protocol and also uh, to make sure that uh, we can trace, test uh, all the uh, employee who's infected and make sure all the family also uh, we can monitor uh, included uh, community uh, surrounding our uh, operation. So uh, that's uh, how we uh, uh, make sure that the business and uh, aligning with SDGs, I would like to uh, say, I, will, I would say that uh, it's really important to understand uh, about how these SDGs can bring positive impact to uh, your uh, and aligning with your uh, business strategy. Thank, Thank you. you. That's that's really helpful. And, and as you've summarized, it's also helpful for your business and how it's really helped you drive the business. I was also interested to hear your all the work you were doing in, in the area of the pandemic and COVID. In fact, we know globally that 75% uh, of the businesses as uh, measured in our progress report, um, CEOs, believe that the COVID has heightened their need to work on sustainable development across their business. So whilst it's a real issue, it's, it's good that it's focused us on some real uh, progress that we need to make. Um, so, Lucia, this the same question for yourself. I would love to know from you, what does um, working towards SDGs mean in your business? And again, maybe how the pandemic might have affected. Thank you very much, Sue. And, and, and thank you for have, having uh, Bang Jack here today. Um, Bang Jack Corporation, uh, we started off as a refinery. And uh, it's very unique because uh, when we started off our business, uh, uh, we were very remote from, from the heart of the city. But now, you know, the city is growing. So now we are at the very heart of the community. The community has been growing with us and uh, we've grown alongside them for almost 40 years. And I think uh, the, the word of the day or, or the decade or the century is, is agility. So, you know, uh, uh, we need to be agile and, and adjust to, to, to the context or, or, the, or the, the, the situation. And, Jack, knowing that you know uh, the world cannot last long with fossil based uh, fuel so we have now diversified uh, our business into five businesses and uh, we're now into marketing uh, uh, renewable energy uh, synthetic biology uh, and and natural resources uh, and uh, we have set out a, a goal to be carbon neutral in 2030 and to be to reach a net uh, Greenhouse gas uh, zero net zero uh, in 2050, and as as a as a uh, uh, energy company is is rather challenging 
So this is a picture just, just to let you know. This, uh, this was when we started our business. It was a, a refinery uh, uh, up in uh, the bank of the Jabraya River almost 40 years ago. And now we are in five businesses uh, plus a an uh, <clears throat> innovation management uh, business. And uh, we set out a goal to, as I mentioned, you know, to be carbon neutral in 2030 and to be net zero in 2050. And what we did was, uh, in fact, we started off uh, with the uh, choosing or prioritizing nine SDGs uh, for our, our business a few years back. But last year, it was a good opportunity to revisit and refocus. So now we put uh, climate action as the umbrella of everything and, uh, uh, and we separate into two tiers. Tier one is uh, in process. It's something that we can do in our own business. And tier two is after process. It's more like the CSR activities, you know, what we do uh, uh, over and above our businesses. And that makes our focus a little bit more, more stronger. And also uh, uh, we know what, what we do. And as I mentioned, and I think Kun Nopadon mentioned earlier, I think COVID-19 is a blessing in disguise. Much as we were impacted, I think 2021 was, uh, no, 2020 was the worst year in financial performance for Bang Cha. But our CEO and the, the management team kept telling our employees that we need it to be agile and, and you know, we need to be prepared and that, make us much stronger coming out of the pandemic. Last year was the best year in terms of financial performance. So we went from, you know, like the, the very deep hole to up there and we will keep being agile. And also uh, in terms of doing our uh, CSR or, or sustainability activation, uh, the pandemic also gave us some opportunities. For example, we did Previously, we did a, a, a school program for reading and writing uh, and enabling the, the teacher to, to, to help the, the, the students to read because believe it or not, uh, uh, still, you know, this is the very problematic for Thailand or I don't know, maybe a lot of countries. A lot of people cannot read nor write, but you don't know. People sometimes remember it as picture and they think, okay, when they see this, this should be should be pronounced like this, but they can't read or write. So that's one of the fundamental problems that we'd like to, to tackle. And previously, we had to send the team to school and, and do all the monitoring and everything. But when came the pandemic, we used online program. And so from like three to five schools or provinces that we could reach, now we could cover from the north of Chiang Rai to the south of Naratiwa. You know, so it's, it's the agility and, and the, the fact that we can adapt and learn to, 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 to adapt or adjust. Uh, so again, I know it, uh, COVID has, has uh, hit us in, in many fronts, but at the same time, it has also given us some strength to, to move forward. Yeah, thank you, Luenta. That's that's really interesting, and you, indeed, you're right. It, it has actually focused our attention on on the real issues of the world and, and how we need to work together on that. Um, and actually, we do. We found in our progress report in, in our CEO survey, 45% uh, of CEOs during the pandemic had actually raised the ambition of their to their goals during COVID. So it hadn't taken us our eyes off the prize. And amazing to hear the work that you're doing. And clearly, that's. Um, reflected in the data that in this area, the subregion is ahead of progress on, on education. So uh, thank you for that. Um, it does sound like it's very easy listening to you two. So you, oh, we just need to be agile, which I, I know this is not easy. So uh, that's, it's great to hear that. And in the context of things not being easy, I'd like to move to Azara and, and ask you about the challenges because of course, uh, everyone is here sitting, mm, how do I make this happen? So I'd love to hear your thoughts about, you know, what are the key challenges that you faced as you put the SDGs into your uh, targets, goals, and indeed tried to put that across the whole organization and supply chain, and et cetera. And, and also some of the examples you had of how you overcame those challenges to help people listening here. 
Thank you, Azara. Uh, Sawadika, I was thinking about your question, Zu, and I found that quite complex questions. I was like, oh, I wish that's for someone else, but you're right, the challenges are just great. But um, uh, first of all, let me just introduce Idoko a little bit. Um, Idoko is an infrastructure tower company. Uh, we have about almost 50,000 towers as we speak, covering nine countries in the South, uh, in the Asian Southeast Asian region. Um, but what that means, right, these nine countries, the total GDP of the nine countries is about 2.7 trillion, which is smaller than the GDP of Germany alone, which is around 3.6 billion. It's just to give a taste of, you know, the kind of countries that we operate in. And at the same time, whilst EDOCO serve about 25% of the mobile market, 91 million of the population is Still, still has no internet connections in these countries. And we heard many leaders have started to announce, especially during pandemic, that internet or connectivity is actually a basic human right, which is the first principle of the UN Global Compact Principles, right? And not just that, the countries that we operate in, um, let's take Pakistan, for example, GDP uh, per day, uh, you know, is around 3.2 uh, US dollars. Um, only about, I think about 73% of the population has in, uh, electricity connection. So we're talking about basic human rights here, yeah, in these countries. So for E.co, uh, since we operate in these nine countries, too many challenges, but I would break it down into three. The first one is the country level challenges. Different country uh, of the nine countries that we operate in has different level of sustainability maturity um, the gov between frontier and developing markets. Different priorities, economic priorities are different, social priorities are different. Um, and second challenges would be in the industry itself. I think most of us here hopefully would agree that there are so many standards out there. Uh, there are over 600 standards I was told which standard to follow for Towers Infrastructure Company uh, you know, we as a whole also, we are lack of directions or in fact, we are not yet united in terms of the directions that we want to take in terms of our sustainability agenda or even reporting, for example. And if we go back to the third challenges, is that at the company level, right? We operate in nine countries, nine culture, nine ways of doing things, uh, and yet we are one group. So all these challenges together, we look at country level, industry level, and company level, it comes back to how, how do we overcome? So I know you asked for examples, but I think if you, your company is one like Edoco where you operate in multiple countries, if you look at country level, you cannot operate alone. So this is where we have to work closely with the governments, with the regulators, because we need to understand what is it that that specific country needs. Yeah? Uh, Cambodia needs is different than Bangladesh needs, for example. And secondly, at industry level, I just came back from Towers Exchange event, which is an industry for Towers Infrastructure Company, where we are starting to to come together to 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 this uh, to sort of um, you, um, decide and um, analyze what are the standards that we need to follow, what is actually the common denominators or bare minimum that we as an industry needs to start championing and focus on. And thirdly, at a company level, um, of course, I think uh, there's many things that Idoco has done this year. Uh, one of it is we look at sustainability as a compliance matter. It's not just about communications. So we park sustainability under my department that is under recent compliance. And we revamped um, a lot of our system by doing back the basic. I know quite a number of you are already advanced, but we actually restart our maturity calculations. We revisit our systems, our procedures. Like I said, the standards keep on changing, so we have to adapt to the changes. We hit our reset button this year, uh, and hopefully we're going to launch our first sustainability report uh, next month, ins inshallah. Thank you. That was really helpful to actually put a, a spotlight on the difficulties. So um, you clearly have been agile, as Greta mentioned, but it's, uh, it's a tricky thing to do. So indeed, we hope we're here to help support you. Um, and. Bring me now to, to, to Esther. So we've listened to some of the challenges, we've listened to some of the work that's been put in, 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 in place in businesses. Um, and uh, Esther, who is a SDG pioneer for the UN Global Compact, um, has had a lot of, it, of experience in this whole area. So Esther, I'd, I'd like to ask you, you know that the, the, we're currently off track to deliver these goals in the region and in globally. Um, with your experience that you've been doing, I'd, 
I wonder what would you say to CEOs about the need to take action and you know, the thoughts that you would might give to them in terms of putting the SDGs at the heart of a business? Well, thank you for having me and uh, well, really wonderful to be back to Bangkok. The last trip was 2019. So, yeah, and uh, I think um, it's exciting to be here. And uh, I think um, some of the previous speakers already say that, you know, uh, there's actually a blessing in disguise. We learned from COVID. And uh, in fact, uh, in 2020, 2021, uh, sustainability or ESG really exploded into the mainstream agenda, whether it is the global agenda, national agenda, or you know, um, business agenda. And um, last year I was at, at uh, Glasgow, and everywhere return is like raised to zero. So um, raised to zero. SDG or the 10 principle of UNGC all are pointing to the North Star goal that we need a sustainable and a low carbon future. And uh, for, the, for just, you know, just a, a quick introduction, uh, City Developments Limited or CDL uh, was established in 1963 only with eight employees. And today we are operating in 29 countries and regions and we are, we are in the building and construction sector. And we know very well that uh, this sector has high impact also, uh, responsible for about 40% of uh, global greenhouse gas emission. And even you are not in the industry, you are you know, living in one, working in one. So people spend about 90% indoors. So how you use your building is very important, will create an impact as well. So if I may share that, I'm really very glad to have you know, started the sustainability journey in 1995, focusing on conserving as we construct. But in 2005, that is the first turning point that we joined UN Global Compact and uh, really looking at what global best practices is all about. Because Singapore is a very small country, we can't just look at Singapore alone or even, you know, region, but we have to look at uh, global practices since we are also talking to a global audience. And then um, in 2016, we embraced SDG once it was launched, first with nine goals and now 14 goals now. And I think that is very important for us because it really provides the, com uh, the compass. And uh, as building sector, we can't just look at Oh, infrastructure, innovation, you know, um, a technology. But we also have to look at, you know, some other aspects like, you know, equality, labor practices, and human rights, because we rely a lot on uh, migrant workers as well in Singapore. So, um, uh, of course, even sustainable finance and all that. If I could share that in 2017, based on the SDG, we launched our uh, sustainability blueprint. We called it Future Value 2030. And we set our goals and targets that align with global goals, 2030. And in 2019, actually, we supported uh, UNGC's 1.5 degree um, uh, business ambition. That was an extension of 2018, which we actually pledged uh, um, to uh, has. SVTI, Science-Based Target Initiative, validated reduction um, uh, 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 target for our greenhouse gas emission. So all these are step by step. It, it is a journey. For those uh, companies who are starting, there is hope. I just want to share our journey that, you know, there is really, you know, uh, progressive uh, steps that we can take to achieve where we want to. And we are far from you know, where we want to, because um, uh, last year, we pledged to the net zero by 2030 for uh, building and new developments that is directly under our um, uh, management, and by 2050, uh, net zero for all buildings and, and all. So we need to follow, you know, global practices, follow, you know, uh, 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 certain guidelines and all that. And I think um, UNGC does provide this very well. If I could just share quite quickly that uh, how our strategy, you know, um, for sustainability, there are actually four pillars that we look at. The first is integration. You can't do it alone. You have to, you know, um, integrate the whole, you know, ESG into your business strategy, engaging your board of directors and uh, top management, mid management, on-site, off-site, you know, headquarters and subsidiary. And not just your own internal stakeholder, but the whole ecosystem. And I can share a little bit more on the supply chain, which is very important, that bring us to, you know, SME. How can we get them on board as well? Then the second pillar is actually um, innovation. If you talk about net zero, even when we pledge, you know, net zero, we know that with today's technology, we will not be able to achieve it. But we have this seven or eight years that we have to really push hard. With ambition, then you drive action. 
Okay, then um, innovation don't come free. So the next pillar is investment. And that was also why we have expanded very act uh, uh, actively in uh, tapping on sustainable finance. And uh, businesses, yes, we can do, you know, uh, contribute, but we need funding, we need, you know, um, alternative source of, you know, um, uh, funds. And that's why in 2017, we rolled out the first green bond uh, by a Singapore company. And since then, we have already moved to, you know, sustainability linked loans and, 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 uh, and other facility. And what we are proud of is 2019, we pushed, uh, the, we launched the SDG innovation loan. And uh, with, uh, with our uh, one, uh, largest bank in Singapore. And together we rolled out this framework that is connecting SDG with innovation. And we actually, after two years, we came up with really good innovations that drive change. And the bank gave us a discount. So, which is very hard to squeeze money from banks, as you know. So, uh, definitely, like just now, uh, Mr. George uh, uh, Lee was talking about ESPN. I was really, really honoured to have joined the ESPN uh, last year. And, uh, you know, the, it's a wonderful, you know, green uh, deal that we are working on. And uh, businesses do, you know, have the responsibility and the ability to, to drive change. And last but not least, we share your pain, impact. You know, how do we, you know, share our impact, positive or negative impact? How do we report it according to, you know, a, a global standard that everybody can understand, whether I talk to Europe or, you know, uh, America, everybody understand the impact that we are talking about. So the SDG Compass is very helpful to look at, you know, provide a common language for us to share with our investors. And with good sustainability results or report card, we have really gained better access to ESG funds, which is fast growing, and also sustainable finance as well. So uh, I will stop here first, and then we'll continue later. Thank you. Thanks very much, Esther. Well, I, I think for anyone listening to all of this, to all of you, it's, it's incredible to see the work that you've done. It's innovative, it's raising finance, it's really making progress in the sustainable development goals. So obviously working with the local networks, you can connect and, and have advice and be able to talk to, to companies like yourselves and, and help us all make progress. But also, um, as I said before, we have the SDG Ambition Accelerator, a very practical program that you can go on. If you're starting on this journey, that's a really good way to understand how to prioritize, what should my goals be, etc. And I know that, uh, Elim, you've been through this program, so I think it'd be really great to hear from you. you know, how did that help you get on the, on the journey of setting goals, um, having ideas to make progress? Yeah, yeah uh, thank you, Shu. So, in 2020, uh, yeah, APP joined the uh, Ambitious Accelerator uh, program for SDGs, and uh, we found this uh, program is really helpful, uh, of course, to uh, uh, review or recheck our strategy. Is uh, uh, ambitious enough, and how we can accelerate or for the implementation, of course, and uh, this uh, happen uh, within our internal on how we can. Ref uh, we start to review our policy again and uh, which one missing and of course also uh, to make sure that which uh, oppor uh, find opp opportunity internally uh, how we can push uh, and accelerate the implementation mm -hmm. because, uh, because without implementation the impact will not come uh, it's not only uh, set the target but uh, the most important like what Esther just now uh, engaging the board uh, engaging the internal uh, included operation on how uh, our goals can be achieved by uh, accelerate the implementation. So this program really help us to uh, to check uh, our internal uh, from the policy level uh, a standard operating procedure to make sure that all the goals that we already set aligning with the SDGs uh, uh, goals that we have uh, prioritized can be uh, implemented well and uh, we can find again the uh, opportunity which part that we can stretch the uh, target uh, which is right now also we working with uh, one of the consultant to again remap uh, setting including we exploring SBTI on how we can contribute going to uh, net zero by uh, 2060 uh, which is our government already uh, set the goals and we also part of the uh, government uh, target on how we can uh, achieve a uh, follow net sync by uh, 2030 because of APP, uh, one of our raw material coming from the plantation. So, of course, uh, this is one of our res responsibility to also uh, contribute to the goals. So, I think uh, uh, really important to uh, really helpful this program to uh, 
to help uh, the company uh, on how we can make sure that uh, all the uh, strategy or the vision that has been set uh, align with all the implementation on the ground. Yeah. So that's thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Very, very helpful to hear that practical uh, advice and, and experience. Um, I'd, I'd like to move now to you again, uh, Gloria. You, you showed us at the beginning that you've made this enormous shift and agility towards um, the five new pillars that you've had. It's, it's, it's really interesting. And also you, you mentioned, uh, all of you have mentioned spontaneously, net zero, uh, human rights, education. So how that's working towards the, us delivering the goals, it's great to hear. I think what would be also interesting is to understand how working towards these sustainable development goals has indeed helped your own business results. I'd love to hear that practically. Yes, thank you again. Uh, I think, um, in fact, all these goals have been embedded in the business you know, forever, but it's just uh, how you systematically put it in place and help especially our em on employees visualize. Mm. You know, but I think, uh, I think by now, you know, it's quite, a, the, the, the awareness level is quite there. Before that, it was like those colorful yeah. <laughs> 17 goals, uh, but now people are more aware and, and, and especially, uh, uh, you know, communications have, have been done internally and externally and also, you know, with, it, with the help of the Global Compact Network Thailand, mm. if, if I were to mention, you know, we've been trying to, to raise awareness on that. And I think uh, if we were to look back uh, five or, or, or 10 years before, compared to now, we've, we've come uh, quite a long way and, 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 and congratulations on, on that. Still a long way to go as well. Uh, um, as I mentioned, you know, when we set the, the, the climate action as, as the umbrella, it doesn't mean that we completely ignore the other goals. Or even when we prioritize the, the five, you know, the, the nine goals, it doesn't mean that we completely ignore the rest. One thing, work with another. Mm. And, and, and also it also help. If I were to, to uh, focus on perhaps uh, two initiatives, the climate action uh, also helps us uh, work with all the other girls like, you know, the water management. Mm -hmm. Because of course, in the refinery, we need to, to, to use uh, water, which is a very scarce resource, very efficiently. We need to, to reuse and recycle and make the most use out of it. We also uh, uh, work with the community, you know, to make sure that uh, uh, they have good environment to, to live in. Uh, on the uh, sequestration side, we also work with the like uh, people in the the, the east, uh, Gokmark Island. We now uh, uh, working on a seagrass project. Mm -hmm. You know, which is uh, one of the best uh, uh, nature-based uh, carbon sequest mm -hmm. sequestration. So that's again, you know, life underwater and a few other things. So that that comes uh, uh, all together. And what it also helps is in terms of recognition and branding. Yeah. Of course, you know, when you are a good citizen mm -hmm. and 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 you did you do it uh, from within, then you you get recognized. Not that we are after awards or anything, but mm -hmm. that that's something that that that's a. Uh, 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 that would be good for, for the business and also for, for the employees. Or uh, the work that we do with the community or the work that we do for our workplace to be a good workplace for, for our employees. You know, I want our company to be a happy workplace, for example. So the fact that we uh, have this uh, gender and equality issue on the table, you know, LGBTQ is a, a, a no issue for 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 the company and we we do recognize them we want to be inclusive so and we, again we were recognized with awards and other things but what what was most rewarding was that our own employees feel that this is a good place to work for and also like last year we were number 17 in in uh, if i if i may just uh, number 17 in The, the top 20 companies that mm. the new generation would like to work for, for example. So I think this, this come together. And again, you know, all these are not just the colorful uh, table anymore, but, but it means something. Yeah. And then and I congratulate the, the, the UNGC and the SCAP also on, on that. And I think uh, together we can still collaborate to, to, to make it work further. 
Thank you, Gloria. And, and, and also, you, you mentioned earlier on that you'd had this fantastic financial year after a difficult year. So it's, it's, it's true that working hard in this area is, is uh, good and positive for, for business results. And indeed, the uh, employees definitely young people want to work for companies that are committed to this we, we see this all over and we know that um the ceos are saying that uh it's customers consumers and employees that are driving their interest in sustainability as well as investment and less regulation these days so um thank you for that thank you and one thing you mentioned as well was um about collaborating with others to to make this happen and how that how that works for sure we need to be working together on this and um so zara i'd love to uh, uh, bring this question to you about collaboration and maybe how you've done this and how this has helped you progress your business and, and progress towards the goals either within your industry or across other sectors um i think it'd be great to hear from your experience in this area uh, thanks, Sue. Um, I cannot think of any sustainability initiative that we can do alone without the support of others. Uh, that itself is, is an answer in itself, right? But I think if we go back to what I mentioned about country level, industry level, and company level, if we take a country level, for EDOCO, for example, we are based in Malaysia. So it's very important for us to support the government um, goals as well. So Malaysia has recently uh, reaffirmed our commitment in the 12th Malaysia plants, where sustainability is the main agenda part of it. So we need to understand, like I mentioned earlier, uh, what are the things that we can help and support the government, right? So right now we are working with the government agencies in terms of the 100 million trees target. Um, and at the same time, um, at the country level, you know, we have UNGC Malaysia who has been very supportive of a lot of IDOCO initiatives. When we did our waste management program, uh, we recycle used cooking oil, something that people don't really talk about. We collaborate with UNGC uh, Malaysia in order to make that event a success. So th that's at country level. If you look at, at industry level, it's a very competitive industry, I must say, uh, but we still can work together, right? So when I went for the Tower Sections event in the U London last month, it's important for companies like Edoco where we learn from those who has done it before us. Take Cellnex, for example, or Vantage Towers, where they are much more ahead than us. So we learn from them and we collaborate in terms of, you know, uh, what are the things that we can do better for the industry. Uh, but I think more importantly, at a company level, this is where we can control, right? We, we have control of that. So I think uh, this is where doing business responsibly and innovation, I think a lot of panelists mentioned that. I think it's not just a word. It is something that you have no choice, but you have to do it. So, for example, at e.co, what we have done, our in-house engineers, we develop what we call a network and planning analytics tool where we can identify where we should build our tower. We can reduce the build and the delivery time. And that means we can help to bridge connectivity better. We can help to connect people better. Remember, internet nowadays is the basic human rights, right? And uh, in order to do this, we work closely closely with the, our customers, which is uh, telco companies, with the MNOs. Uh, we work with them and collaborate with them in terms of uh, such effort. And at the same time, we complement, complement our network um, tools just now, which is what we call NAPA, uh, with our digital twin, where we use drone technology to capture images, where we can help to uh, maintain and uh, our towers remotely without physically being there. So this is very important in terms of um, health and safety measures uh, where we can do remotely uh, utilizing artificial intelligence, machine learning. All this comes with innovations and none of this is work alone, right? In-house engineers develop it. We still need to have approval. We still need to get buy-in from our customers. Uh, we still need to sell the idea uh, to the countries, to the, to the ministers of various countries for them to use it in order for us together to help to identify, for example, 5G sites. Again, uh, to bridge the connectivity, to help the underrepresented to have internet which is a basic human right in their lives. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I can't think of anything that Edoco can do alone without that, without others. And I think we have been very privileged uh, to have a very amazing support from the governments of the countries that we operate in. And we look forward to more collaborations in the future. Thank you very much, uh, Zara. And uh, yeah, I think collaboration is at the heart of everything we do. And I'm sure that all the local networks here are, are helpful in, in this region to help uh, 
us build up collaboration, have more sectors working together, because surely that's how we're going to deliver against these, go these goals. Um, now, Esther, for you, <laughs> stepping back, listening to all of this, we've, we've heard about the challenge, we've heard some great ideas as to how to do that, we've seen some great business results behind this. Um, I'd like to ask you about, to step up and think about the ASEAN region as a whole. We know that uh, we have more to do, just like any region in the world. Um, but I'd love to hear your thoughts, your thoughts about you know, what are the particular challenges that uh, this region might face and any thoughts you have about how we can address them. Well, happy to say that uh, well, ASEAN is always uh, the best place to really uh, apply uh, SDG, leaving no one behind. Because, I mean, of course, we are proud to be the third largest uh, populations in the world and set to be the fourth largest economy. And I actually just uh, caught up with some latest data. The median age in ASEAN is about 30 years old. And this group of people, fast growing, 200 20 over million, and, uh, will form a really driving force. Young people have their own mindset that also have the ideal for the future. And they will be our consumers, yeah. our employees, our investors, you know. So they will be really the driving force pushing, you know, it's really a growth engine. And uh, for us as a, a developer, we also have to look at, we are not building for the past or today. We're building for the future. So how do we design home, you know? And uh, during COVID, we have also learned that home is no longer just for living, but also for working, for social space. So how do we build, uh, develop, a, a design a space that is, is, you know, for both physical and mental health is very important. And uh, for social interaction is very important. And these are the so-called, you know, uh, consumer activism are going to drive change. And, um, uh, at, at Glasgow, we have seen so many young people on the street or in, mm -hmm. in the uh, inside, you know, the, the ground of, uh, of, of COP26, and their, their voices are real. And uh, I think we cannot neglect that. And uh, if businesses are smart business, they will look at the future. Don't look at just the past glory or today. And uh, I think um, that's why we actually, the whole world is pushing for so-called TCFD, which is the Task Force for Climate Related Financial Disclosure. In the past, ESG was considered as, okay, good to have. When I started 20 over years ago, everybody is like, why green, you know, what for? You know, green is money, is cost. But today, the cost of inaction will be higher than the cost of action. Because, like, for example, like Singapore, we, pledged, we announced the pledging for net zero in February. It came with a lot of regulatory changes. First, carbon tax. Now $5 per ton, two years, five times. Another two years, nine times. By 2030, it will be all the way to $50 to $80. And we are not just looking at Singapore, but we are operating in different countries. And uh, Europe, US, the price is you know, yeah. really, really high. So from the business perspective, and uh, embracing sustainability has never been a stronger business case as of now. So if you don't prepare for the future and you don't conduct, you know, climate change scenario planning, you don't know what is, you know, going to be your impact, you can't manage. And that is also why uh, what get measures gets managed. And that is also why the SDG, you know, disclosure, compass, and all those are really helping us, which are the 17 goal, 169 targets. I always share with uh, some of the, the you know, uh, corporate who are starting out, they say, Esther, I'm really giddy. I don't know which one to start. So I always tell them that not the more, the merrier. Okay, conduct your material issues. Every country, every industry, every company have different issues. You can't cover everything. Yeah, so identify what are the most materials to your business. Ask your internal, external stakeholders. We started in 2014, the annual uh, materiality study. It really helped us because what we think is most important may not be aligned with my investors or my consumers. So how do we know to have a very objective view that materiality study provide a direction? And after that, you have to also map what, is the, what are the risks and opportunity. Today, climate risks are really investment risks and business risks. And if you don't know your risk and you don't know how to mitigate, your business will not survive. And now with the urgency, mitigation is no longer enough. 
we are talking about risk adaptation. And that is also why we talk about innovation, technology application, tap on new, you know, um, thinking, new mindset, new skill set. And uh, in Singapore, actually, we're very honored to have started to build this uh, sustainability academy in 2017. Mm -hmm. Partnership, you know, with six government agencies, 15 industry partner, and we gave half of the space to Sustainable Energy Association Singapore, which have tied up with ADB, and we actually uh, build capacity for sustainable energy professional mm -hmm. and bring in technology. So that is a space that we design and build it to a net zero building. So we provide a physical platform and we provide a platform for people to really exchange, interact and learn together because sustainable energy is the way forward. And if you don't bring all the brains and uh, technology together, you can't move the needle. And of course, because youth are really the power, okay, we have our youth called Climate Network, we established in 2017. And you know, one of my favorite goals is number five, right? Gender equality. <laughs> so in the building industry, it's always male dominated, especially when I joined two decades ago. So I, I established a Women for Green Network since 2017, provide a stronger presence and voice for women. We work with guys so you know we love to work with guys also but we really need to provide women a little bit more confidence and a space for them to speak up you know in board meeting in international platform in business platform and we have seen a great progress and even at CDL ourselves 68 percent of our staff are women 50 percent are head of department level but we still have more room you know to grow for for growth especially at the board level and uh, so well there are a lot of you know opportunity for partnership and uh, partnership really amplify mm -hmm. voices action impact and uh, i think that is the future and that is what sdg is all about oh thanks very much esther so um you mentioned a lot of great things there. You talked about the youth of the region and that being the future. For, I really believe that it's it's phenomenal how strong younger people are in this whole area, considering human rights, considering uh, climate, and how it's passionate for their for, for their future. And therefore, they will be the future for us. They will lead our businesses, etc. So that's a that's a great that's a great thing. You talked about collaboration, um, and you talked about uh, prioritizing and materiality, and that that's. A, a rigorous and process that companies need to go through. And, and you also mentioned gender, and you said that we need to give women more confidence. Well, listening to you four here, I think it's fantastic to <laughs> hear your voices, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you are beacons of uh, example to many women. Certainly have lots of, lots of energy and lots of passion coming from all of you, so that's wonderful to hear. Um, and actually, just one quick thing you mentioned earlier on, Esther, was about supply chain and that being a challenge. So I'd like to finish up now with, with each of you mentioning just what advice would you give to businesses who are thinking on setting on this journey? How do they go about it? Um, and in particular, Esther, I'd also love to hear, it, as you mentioned, your, your advice, your thoughts about supply chain. I mean, I, you mentioned it and it's definitely something important. So yeah, your thoughts about supply chain and then your final message to people who are thinking about going on this way. And then we'll, I will ask the same question about your final thoughts to someone who's starting on this direction afterwards. So Esther, over to you. Well, okay. Um, it's, it's just simple fact. The SME account for 90% of global economy, and in Singapore is very unique, 99%, not just 90%. So that is like no brainer, you really have to engage your SME. And especially in the building industry, we have a long, you know, value chain. And we work with architect, engineer, designer, and uh, you know, um, uh, supply chain, uh, suppliers, and vendors, and even tenants. And uh, you know, so all these are actually, many of them are SME. And how can we ignore that? And um, of course, when you come to rules and regulations in Singapore, um, sustainability reporting is already mandatory. Climate reporting is um, now comply or explain. So everybody is struggling. And when we talk about net zero, uh, we need to look at scope three, which is actually 70% uh, of our scope three are contributed by supply chain. So their footprint is my footprint. 
So it's as simple as that, that I have to engage them from, uh, you know, getting how do we design our building, how do we manage our building, how do we construct it is very important. Without SME, I can't achieve my, you know, net zero build uh, 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 targets and I cannot, you know, achieve what innovation, innovate uh, and, and all, uh, infrastructure and all that. And uh, in fact, we have really tried to push the agenda and we believe in really innovation. Uh, we have actually an uh, incubation for SDG, we just established in 2019, and impact investing is fast growing because when you talk about innovation, we just we don't just look at the established you know innovator. In fact, there are a lot of young people coming up with very interesting you know technologies and uh, solutions. And uh, two day, two nights ago, we just have a we call it SDG Open Hack, which is a partnership with Gen a University of Geneva, University of Tsinghua, and NUS, and all the university in in Singapore. So we are going to bring it to the region as well with uh, this partnership. We call it SDG Open Hack, which is basically encouraging JC to university students come up with technologies and solutions within 24 hours. And then we, we, we unearth really good talent and we help them to develop their, their idea and get mentor and get investors to help them grow because there's no end to R&D. And we can't just say that we only work with the big boys. You also need to look at, you know, discover some of the unicorns. So not just in Singapore, we believe that there are a lot of youth talents in the region as well. So, and these are also SMEs. And, you know, and we also work with like our monetary authority and uh, stock exchanges to help SME to start their reporting journeys, to start, you know, to adopt SD, uh, SDG as well. And uh, we just started an, uh, a special dedicated sustainability training program for our board of directors because you can't just ask all the managers to do the job. Your director have to also take the leading role and uh, we have a dedicated training for our uh, in uh, our director, just uh, the inaugural one just started two days ago. So I was really happy to share what sustainability is all about and how can we integrate it into your business to add value, not just for today, but for tomorrow. Wow, thanks, Esther. That's, that's really helpful. I mean, that's a great piece of advice, which is make sure that you're training your leadership as well as your troops. Um, uh, Azara, I'd love to hear your thoughts. You know, one message to anyone who's thinking about embarking on this journey and, and, and setting ambitious goals on sustainability? Um, I think uh, don't be afraid to start small. It's okay, you know, um, a different company is at different level of maturity. In fact, it's okay to hit that reset button, um, to recheck again, rebalance again what we need to prioritize. Business changes, the lens, the country changes, you know, so many things changes in into this world. So I think if we start small and make our way towards the 10 UNGC principles, for example, that would be great. And I think secondly, or last my last point is don't be don't be don't don't stop learning. Uh, I love the idea like UN accelerator program and all this, which is great. Uh, but I think we need to learn from each other. Um, it's a shortcut to a lot of things. At least that's what I learned as a student and even now, right? Somebody has done it a hard way. If it takes someone 12 years to figure it out, hopefully it takes me two years, you know, uh, which is better. So I think, um, again, don't be afraid. Just start now, start today, uh, you know, and uh, and learn. And I also hope um, all of you will be uh, looking forward for e.co's um, first sustainability report. I mentioned earlier that we're going to launch. So it's not perfect. That's what I've told my stakeholders. Uh, but we've started. We've started and we take this seriously and we embed it across our business, across our footprint in all nine countries and perhaps more as we continue to grow. Thank you, Sarah. That's a, a fantastic piece of advice that uh, I'm sure is warm to everybody, which is don't be afraid to start small, get going, make progress. And indeed, that's a good philosophy for everything that we do in life, which is, which is new. Um, and Deutsche, same question to you. Advice that you might give anyone thinking about starting on this journey? Yeah, I think it's, I, I, I emphasize uh, Esther thoughts, you know, commitment from the top. And again, we, we just elevated our uh, board of directors, you know, we have the, the sub board, sub committees, and one was the, uh, the committee on corporate governance. And now it's uh, become, became the committee on corporate governance and sustainability. And of course, you know, it's, it's all about ed educating them and, 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 and make them aware of this. And then after you have the commitment, you, you need to make sure that you walk the talk 
you know, it's, it's, it's no use just communicate and without taking any action. And you need to include all the, the stakeholders. So I always say that, you know, we, we are quite uh, uh, um, accepted as a leader in sustainability, but ne we need to lead inclusively. So internally, externally, you know, uh, the community, the employees, the supplier, uh, everyone uh, uh, throughout the supply chain. Because again, you know, that footprint is also our footprint. So yeah, again, I, I, I emphasize what, what, what Esther said, and I think these are a few words. And the last words is unity, you know, the theme of, of, of this, this uh, conference. Uh, we, we need to do it together. It's, it's the world of co collaboration. You cannot just be a hero alone. You know, bring out the best of you and help the world together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Loita. That's great advice to everyone. And uh, it's nice advice as well to think that we need to do this together with, as, 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 a, as a group of people in, in humanity. So it's a, it's a great feeling. Um, Ellen, you. Last piece of advice to anyone who's thinking of embarking on this journey. Okay. Uh, from me, don't stop only aware, but I think understanding what is the uh, goals that we want to achieve is really important. And also uh, keep it in mind that uh, we want to bring positive impact to our society. And uh, it's really important uh, to know. And uh, of course, uh, we have to benchmarking, learning from other who has experience. And this is a journey. So we cannot, uh, we, we have to drive the change. It's nothing simple. And of course, collaboration is really important here. Uh, find your local network. I think Global Compact already provide a lot of tools, included the SDGs uh, uh, ambition uh, uh, accelerator program. So this is really good program to explore. And you can uh, uh, have a more understanding on how you can set or priority, prioritize your uh, uh, target and the goals uh, aligning with your company strategy. And I believe that something that you uh, already understand uh, if you want if you believe some something that you can uh, uh, automatically drive the change and before you believe you have to understand what you what you drive or what you do so uh, I think together we can uh, uh, accelerate uh, the goals and uh, we are all here uh, I think awareness level uh, is enough but now how we can uh, drive the change thank you thank you Ellen um, fantastic. It's been an amazing hour. I've really enjoyed every moment of it. I've heard some fantastic ideas, innovations, um, solid business case for, for this work. Um, the realization and, and understanding that we definitely need to do this together. We need to collaborate and really need to learn from each other because there are some fantastic examples here and businesses that are well on the journey. But everyone should get on board. Uh, we're here to help. And I know these well, women are really here to help and, and they've spent this valuable time here today. So thank you again to Ellen, Gloita, Azara and uh, Esther. They're here around for the rest of the day for your time, your commitment. And it's, it's really encouraging to know that we have people like you helping us to deliver these sustainable, developable girls for a better world. Thank you very much to all of you. Thank you.